banks have heard the calls from the business community to work closer with them, to lend more where it is right to do so, to assist particularly the small and medium-sized businesses, and to build better relationships. There are some new rules placed on us as well by our regulator and our others. For example, we have to hold more capital. Inevitably, that will affect lending. As any businessman or woman knows, it isn't possible to increase the fixed costs on any business without it having an impact. We cannot, in simple terms, both hold more and lend more and at the same time. And also, small and medium-sized businesses have now been classified as high risk. But that does not mean that it is all too difficult or that loans are not available. The broad numbers show that 85 to 90 percent of all finance applications are granted and that any one time less than a third of businesses are seeking finance. But it doesn't mean that the banks think that everything is fine. We seek to resolve the problems for those who are wanting to borrow, or seek to borrow, and indeed as well for those who perhaps borrowing may not be the right answer. Confidence is vital. I mean, it's vital for us as individuals, and of course, it's, in, you know, individuals run businesses, so that confidence piece is absolutely essential. And there is some developing. It tends to be patchy, and it tends to uh, almost be as if somebody who's feeling more confident thinks that they're the only bright light, light in a dark pool, and it's not the case. One of the aspects, though, that we do see is that at the same time, there are the concerns about business sometimes not getting the money that they seek to expand or grow. At the same time, their deposits, their savings, if you like, in the banks have never been so high. So do your business plan. Think about how best to invest. And then if that business plan makes sense, use your own resources first to finance your growth. Come to the banks as well. Let's do it together. New lending is holding up, but old loans and overdrafts are being paid back by business and at a faster rate than many can ever remember seeing. And deposits by businesses within the banks are increasing very fast as well. It is clearly something to do with confidence or indeed lack of it. And in the banks, we recognize that we need to play our part in improving confidence as both increased demand for fin finance and economic recovery go hand in hand. That is, in fact, another reason why we're here. And it's not just to talk, it's to listen as well, and to set out the proposals, the Better Business Finance proposals, and what the Business Finance Task Force is all about. Now, that task force was set up last year by six banks, HSBC, Barclays, Lloyds, RBS, Santander and Standard Chartered, and they created 17 initiatives, which I've grouped into uh, some chunks today, of which the first one is improving customer relationships. And I'm glad to say that since that start, we have also now been joined by the Cooperative Bank and indeed by the Northern Ireland Banks. And particularly on that first, and we think very important initiative, which is a network of mentors for small businesses. The mentor is um, experience that I may not have, either right across the sector within businesses, show me pitfalls, and um, somebody to say, well, have you thought about this? Or I'm, I'm going to do this, or these are the problems. Or have you tried this as well? And suggestions, and also opportunities to, to do new things. I'd like to have a sounding board, someone to talk to, someone to go through my ideas, some to point out pitfalls. I mean, that would, be, that would be really useful for myself. When you're running often small businesses, you're just trying to survive the day, you're running fast, you've got 50 things on your to-do list, you never get through them all, and therefore you don't actually step back and think about your business, which is actually the most important thing to do. Um, so I think it's a it is absolutely the right thing to provide. The difficulty and the challenge is when you're so immersed in running your business, it is to take that time to step out, to actually manage your time more effectively and think how to grow that business in the medium and long term. So the challenge is really 
the really busy people you want to get to who will benefit from the mentoring program are so busy doing it that they may not step back and actually embrace it. And I think that that's probably the main challenge. So as, as, as a service, I think it's a tremendous one. Getting it across to the right audience, I think, will be a challenge for everyone. Mentors supplied by the banks are for finance, 250 are available. They're attached to not-for-profit organizations and they're free for the business community. 250 available now, aiming for 1,000 by uh, this time next year. And again, we've been well helped by the British Chambers of Commerce and by the CBI. And Svedi has been doing the accreditation, so you know that people have hit the right standard. Svedi are here today, I thank them for that. But the portal also gives access to another 40 plus mentoring organizations with some 10,000 mentors uh, available. The next one there is a lending code for businesses with turnover of less than two million. That's a code placed upon the banks about how we interact with the smaller businesses and some principles for the larger businesses. And of course, if the finance isn't what you were seeking or you don't get it, there's an appeals process there now as well. It's transparent. We tell you about it, there's information in the banks and it's got an external reviewer and it's also got an external operation reviewer. So independent people and entities making sure that we do it right. 12 months before you need refinancing is really the time to start discussing because then we know what it is that you want, you know what it is that's there in the way of finance. There's a process and procedure that's in place in good time. As has already been mentioned, there's a two and a half billion pound business growth fund to fill that equity gap. It started to be rolled out in May this year and Stephen Welton, its chief executive, is here today. We've supported the revised enterprise finance guarantee, which again helps growing businesses with their finance and mid-sized businesses access to syndicated debt markets, import important for the larger end of the medium-sized businesses Going to banks is not the only game in town. Trade finance, where are we there? Well, a new SME export scheme is now developed and it's had its soft launch. Capital for Enterprise and uh, ECGD have been very helpful in looking at these areas and again, they are here today. Yes, we've got to influence the Basel capital rules, the regulatory piece that I'd mentioned earlier but these new products for helping with that trade finance are not just about the larger end, they're about the smaller end, and they're not just at the point at which you do the deal and you need to export either. It's more of a broad-based look at that whole area of trade finance and improving products, and a particular interest in it is being taken by Lord Green, who's the Minister of Trade, and of course he comes from the banking industry, so if you like, he knows both sides of the story. Better information for customers. Because it's all very well having a few new ideas and putting forward proposals and rolling out initiatives, but we have to properly inform as well. Some obvious things are there on that slide. Signposting alternative sources of finance, improving customer information. Bringing it together, we have put uh, in place a dedicated website, www.betterbusinessfinance.co.uk. Again, getting thousands of hits, links to other information, but it's not a static website. We keep on putting more information on it, more ideas, more things at the business community as and when they want it and as and when they tell us they would like to see it together. I think it's crucial for banks to be listening to businesses in this way rather than talking at businesses and I think uh, we've got to repair relationships on both sides. Um, I think there was a, a, a horrid period where banks were casinoing and actually we were going in as, as sort of um, people who were obsessed with gambling and we've, we've broken away from that and I, I think in any kind of communication, listening and talking on both sides, what's the odd phrase, you have two ears and one mouth and use them in that proportion and I think the banks are demonstrating that through this range of events and I've, I would encourage them to do it some more. 
Well, I think that there's something very important about taking the banks to the businesses rather than expecting business to come to the banks. And the clear reason for going around the regions is that is where all the small and medium-sized businesses are. We also want to fly the flag to say banks are open to lending. And lastly, we need to hear, and they need to hear, exactly what it is that is causing concern across the business community in the different parts of the country. So put together, I, I hope that it not only does all those things, but also it leaves a lasting and proper set of arrangements in the various towns and cities that we visit, so it improves relationships, and that can only help improve the economy and the economic recovery.